Okay, so today we are going to talk about a little bit more about what is a different type of what is a different um, what are the different types of issues with the stent and it's important to know these problems because the treatment for these problems is are all different so i'm going to start with kind of a picture evaluation of the of the problems that we deal with um, stent now here I would start with, there's a problem with apposition. Problems with sizing. And problems with the expansion. Frequently you may see issues with all of them but what are those what is apposition apposition is the ability or the situation where the stent is abutting so if this is the stent it's making a beautiful flower stent here is abutting the vessel wall okay as you can see the stent is not touching this area okay so this is what we would call malapposition if it is well opposed then it should be touching those areas on the wall and i'll go over how do you deal with it at the end because I'll tell you my approach, but like, you know, you talk to 10 different interventional cardiologists, everyone has a different approach. This becomes important because sometimes the vessel has aneurysms in it or has, um, I would say, ectatic vessel when the vessel is not really uniform as the stent is. Then comes the problem with the sizing and there are different algorithms for sizing. Maybe I can make another video where I can do the sizing uh, video and tell you how different things are being sized. Some people size based on the distal vessel. Some people size it based on the imaging with IVUS or OCT. And what are the different ways to size? So I will go over that on the, in the next video. And then the last one is expansion. Expansion, well, expansion is that if you have a stent, let's say you have a 2.5, so you need to know the stent of the uh, stent size. Otherwise, you cannot tell is it well expanded or not. If it is expanded to up to 90% of this size, okay, that is called well expanded. Many people, sometimes they use interchangeably these two definitions, but this is a little bit different um, because they would say they would put a 2.5 stent in a 4.0 vessel. And yes, it is malopposed, but it may be well-expanded stent. And if it is a well-expanded stent, the chances of having instant restenosis are still low. However, you can have stent thrombosis. Whenever there's a position issue, expansion issue, there could be uh, stent thrombosis. And last, the proper sizing. You know, if you are using, a, again, a 4.0 vessel and you're putting a 2.5 stent in it, this is undersizing of the vessel. If you are using a 3.0 stent, inside of a 2.5 vessel, this is oversized vessel. And what will happen? It will be under 
expanded with uh, under expanded stent. So all of these issues are important to evaluate when you're dealing with a stent related issue. The stent related issues can range either from the structural issues and this includes fracture. This includes uh, what I say is longitudinal deformation of the stent, LDS, or it could be, which means the stent was supposed to be this long. And because of the guide pushing or guide liner pushing or the uh, stent being pushed, it may become shortened, may become like the struts might become more concentrated here. And instead of being this long, it's going to be very small. Now, the other things that it can happen is there could be a deformation in other uh, planes as well with this. All of these will are theoretically likely to increase the risk of instant restenosis, and that needs to be evaluated. Okay.